I joined two hunters on a three-day expedition into Provost, Alberta. The objective was to fill their hunting tags for white-tailed deer and moose. Day one was designated a scouting day. But first, to cover all bases, we sought permission from the landowner. Okay. Oh, I see. Although complete strangers, there was a sense of hospitality and friendship. I figured this to be based on a mutual respect between landowner and hunters who respected the craft enough to seek permission instead of poaching on private property, which is a common occurrence. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> That's in Tuscany then, hey? Yeah. That's it? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this and so the scout began. these experienced hunters, scout day wasn't an option. It was a necessity for the success of this mission. It was a reminder that those who fail to prepare should also prepare to fail. It also made me wonder, do all those that prepare succeed? They strategically surveyed the landscape and found clues left behind by the wildlife that only recently departed. In this particular area, there were tracks and trails everywhere, along with disturbed snow where deer or moose slept only the night before. During the scouting day, the hunters came across tracks that resemble that of a moose. This was great news because at this point we've only seen mule deer, which neither hunter had tags for. In addition, we'd only seen a couple whitetail that were on private property and well out of range. But moose tracks? This was good news. There was an agreement between both hunters that scouting day was going to be specifically and solely for scouting. They agreed that even if they had seen a whitetail within range, they would pass up that kill. The only exception for a kill on scouting day was if they had seen a moose. And after six years of trying to get a moose tag and finally getting one, it was clear to me the moose would be the trophy kill. down here because it drops so any rounds are just going to carry on right so you wouldn't want to shoot down there but if it comes in front of the trees you can blast yes it. we've got a clear line to all the tree lines except across that hill that hill is then the only blind spot yeah but they'll come over it or around there. exactly or right where it goes between the two hills and it's in front of that back face that would be nice yep yeah if they walk between them, right after much the deliberation the and the art of deduction the hunters believed they had found the perfect shooting theater. In preparation for the following morning, they chose a spot to sit and began clearing snow and clipping small branches. The location had to be prepared now because the following morning would require complete and utter silence. Always something. You never bring everything. In. No. 
It was an early morning because, well, it had to be. In Canada, you can only hunt half an hour before sunrise and half an hour after sunset. But it did work for us. Because early birds, they tend to get the scenery. If we were hunting for beautiful scenery, then our trip was as good as done. The orange, yellow, peach, and magenta skies fused together to create one of the most beautiful sunrises I had ever seen. It was simply breathtaking. Or maybe it was just the fact that it was almost negative 30 degrees Celsius. Even before getting to the scouted location, the hunters thought they saw a dark figure in the distance. Got something coming. They readied their rifles in preparation of what could be an early kill. Rubber boots when pressed against tightly packed snow creates a cacophony of sound that acts as blaring alarm bells to wildlife. The incredible hearing and smell possessed by wild game being hunted results in outstanding threat detection that, in a way, makes this metaphorical game of cat and mouse a little more equitable. We were a little behind schedule by the time we reached our previously scouted location. But due to all the animal tracks we had seen earlier in the area, this was without a doubt a wildlife highway. After we made the initial noise of getting prepared and in place, we figured we would give it about 20 to 30 minutes so the wildlife in the area that hurt us could begin to relax and hopefully meander our way. The silence of nature made me realize how loud even a vibrating phone was. After about 45 minutes of waiting in silence with no sign of wildlife, it was decided that we would start making some mating calls. I couldn't help but wonder how unfortunate it would be if a moose came trudging along hoping to find a mate, but instead finding a bullet and its eventual quick death. 
Another intriguing tool in the hunter's toolkit are deer antlers. Rubbing them together simulates two antler deer fighting. The hope is that a female deer, or a doe, comes into the area to find the lucky winner. In her eyes, only the strongest deserves to be her mate. I realize both nature and doe have no sympathy for losers. After two and a half hours in our prepared location, a couple hunters drove through our selected area causing noise and most likely displacing whatever wildlife was in the area. It was now time to move. We saw nothing but mule deer in the area. It was almost as if they knew they were safe because we had no mule deer tags. An unethical hunter would not care, but we did. We drove around hoping to see whitetail or moose from the road, but it wasn't looking good. And then we struck gold. Double check here. Yes, I got one. Totally white tails. Yeah. I gotta get my gun out of the back, so I'm gonna let you get yourself set. Oh, three of them. They're on top of the hill. How far do you think that is, Reese? We're gonna see if we can catch up to them. We've been driving around. There's about three of them. We're gonna have to be really quiet. And we caught up to them all right. Our plan was to cut the pack off by following the trail. But we also found more than we bargained for. Out of nowhere, the three white-tailed deer ran out in front of us. The hunters didn't feel they had an ethical shot. So they held their fire. Damn. Our moment of disappointment was overshadowed by what happened next. Can we, can we cut through? Yeah. Hey, yo, move, move, move. Okay, so it's not a moose, but I was excited. Give me a break. It was one of the most beautiful elk I had ever seen. That's not gonna fall under the antler list. <laughs> oh, that was majestic. I, yeah, it was. Was we missed those guys. Was just to stand here and see that. Yeah. That was awesome. We were all overjoyed that even though we didn't have an elk tag, we were so fortunate to see such a beautiful, majestic creature in the wild. But back to reality, these guys had some white tail to catch. I will see. It's hard. It's hard to catch up the deer. They're closer to moose in size. Are they? Okay. After attempting to stalk the three white tail deer that evaded us. We were about to head back to the hotel when one of the hunters spotted a dark figure in the woods. Yeah, it's the deal deer for sure. Yeah. I gotta walk just a wee bit further. Yeah. Of course it was another mule deer. Off limits. As expected, another mule deer. After coming so close to getting a white tail and having it escape was hard to swallow. And I thought to myself, if I'm thinking about just taking out a mule deer and calling it a day, I'm sure there's some unethical hunter that would actually do it. But not these guys. They respected the game. But would their perseverance be rewarded?
It was day three, and my hopes for a successful hunt started to wane. The good news was that, even at the start of our day, there was plenty of evidence of wildlife all around. Relatively early on, we spotted two whitetail in the bushes. Unlike the mule deer, they were on high alert. And then we had another surprise. Our main target, a moose, only 150 yards ahead of us, well within range for a broadside shot. But there were two problems. In what could only be described as a moose's intuition, he hopped the fence onto private land, land that we didn't have permission to hunt on. If we shot him, it would be considered poaching. The second problem is that it is extremely unsafe and criminal to shoot across a roadway. Patience. Cold, harsh, unforgiving. These words characterize both the landscape and the temperature. They say patience is a virtue, but I began to wonder, is patience always rewarded? As we were patrolling the area, the hunters caught glimpse of a white-tailed doe about 350 yards from the main road back into along the, the tree line. I mean, if you smoke this deer, then that's it. You're going after moose. That's it. That's it's true. Like people on this day. It's true. But if you don't smoke this deer, you might not get anything. <laughs> Taking both space needed to preserve the meat and the time it would take to process the meat into consideration, the decision had to be made. Pursue this white-tailed doe possibly securing a kill, or focus on filling the moose tag that doesn't come around often. It reminded me of a saying, a doe in the freezer is better than a moose in the bush, or something like that. They're going to try to stalk them quietly. I'm staying here because I could still get the video I need, and it will be a lot quieter without three going in. We'll see what happens. But the white tails are super skittish. Gotta be super quiet, super patient. The tightly packed snow under your boots makes this loud crunching, so the idea is to be in the soft, fresh snow. It's a lot quieter than the tightly packed stuff. Would this be another close call, or would their patience pay off? And although patience doesn't guarantee reward, I believe that fortune favors the well-prepared. This experience has taught me that if you patiently prepare and persevere, it's only a matter of time before...